All right. <laughs> so in this video, I'm going to talk about the purpose of guard the object and if there is a purpose to it and do I use it and is it for real life, okay? So, it's cool, right? <laughs> really? It's just a cool thing to teach. It's a lot of fun to see a dog learn how to hold onto something beautifully and any object we throw out there, they learn how to control the object, stay with it, long-wise or small-wise, all right? It's, it's just a fun thing to teach and play with, okay? Now, is it for real life? Not really, can it be? Well, I've had clients in my life that they want their dog to guard some kind of object, a vault, um, you know, something like a briefcase, something like that, okay? And I've done it for them. And we taught the dog to do it for real life scenarios. So it had a purpose for them, okay? In a realistic, you know, situation. Now, why do I teach it to begin with? So, and you see that in a lot of my videos, okay? Of the guard the object stuff. Really, the reason that I use it and you see me teaching it is not because I want to teach guard the object, okay? <laughs> it is the step to teaching very good reveres, bark and holds, okay? So it quickly adds a lot right, of structure, of holding position. In reveres, we want the dog to come up, stay in front when they're told not to bite, to go up and threaten, okay, and bark, okay, scaring the person, threatening them. And again, if the person moves or swings at them to attack, the dog is allowed to attack automatically in retaliation for that action.
okay? So, but the Revere itself is to go and run up to somebody, stop them right there or hold them, bark, right, aggressively. Scaring them, hopefully holding them right where they are. Okay, so what do we need to that? We need a dog to understand to get in the front position, bark aggressively and keep that barking going. Okay, so when we teach to get on the objects, we move around them, we keep them in movement, we're teaching them right off the bat when they get on an object to bark, okay? And we move around them for them to hold that position no matter which way we go around them, how many times, how close, okay? Until somebody reaches in and tries to grab pretending like we're going to go grab the object. Okay, so that is my setup, right, to get a good bark and hold. Okay, that's my step before. Now, is it necessary? No. <clears throat> Does it help dramatically? Yes. It makes getting bark and holds very fast, like days. Okay? And the way I do this with the guard the object you will hear in, let's say, Mondial Ring or any of the ring sports that guard the object is the hardest thing to do, okay? And it takes a long time to teach well. In my system, the way I do it, I get it in days, like two days, right, really, really well, three days to a week, and it is solid, right? I could go into any competition and all the dogs you see here that are guarding boxes, cardboard boxes or coolers or any of that, we're talking, it's just days of training. It's not weeks or months, years. It's days where they can hold any object and understand their feet, the talking, how to hold on to Go. how to spin, right, and block the person off, okay? So that is my foundation to quickly get control, holding themselves in a position, okay, and waiting for the bite to come to them. So this one. not them come off the platforms to go bite like in Mondial Ring, okay? Where that's dangerous stuff in real life, okay? So before I get there, just to finish this. So sending dogs to an object to guard it, get on top of something, hold their feet, hold their position, 
not to come off and attack, not until we go to them and bring the bite to them on the object. Very quickly, they learn how to keep their feet there, okay? And wait for the bite to come to them, okay? And keeping them active talking. That's what guard the object does for me very quickly. I mean days, okay? Then we can send them into reveres to somebody without any platforms or an object to guard. And they'll just stay in front of the person. Rah, rah, and just bark at him, bark at him, bark at him until that arm comes to hit them. Okay? So it's extremely and highly effective. It's probably the quickest way I've ever seen in the world of object guarding or bark and hold techniques. I get it so fast, faster than any other system I've ever seen, okay? And reliably. Now, that's the foundation of how to guard an object and guard something. And again, I use it for prep work for the bark and hold while I'm teaching a guard the object. Now, the way I'm teaching though the guard the object is not the way you would teach it for real life, okay? So for real life, KNPV during their police test is the only sport that does it closest to what it should be done in reality, okay? So they put like a, a briefcase down and they down the dog on it and the dog stays there and quiet, okay? And the decoy passes, the dog knows what's coming, right? The, the decoy passes, he just lays there. The decoy will come back to him and go and try to grab the object and the dog's supposed to bite him as he comes down to grab it, stop him from doing it, okay? But the dog is in a lay down passive state, not barking, okay? Because barking makes no sense in real life for, for guard the object, okay? Because just like Darren came to if you're gonna put the dog on something, you don't know if anybody's ever gonna come around. You don't want the dog just getting on there and talking, right? And wasting energy for no reason, okay? So, in real life, so for example, I had a client that wanted something out in public and to guard it, a lot of people around street, okay? So, we have to teach the dog to get on it and lay on it and stay passive while the public is going on around this, okay? We don't want a dog get on it rah, 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 and barking at every single person that's walking by in the street. There's no need for that, okay? It's unnecessary. And how long is the guy going to be in there? How long is this dog going to be barking and wasting energy, okay? So the dog goes passive, okay? And now, anybody could walk around it, past it, there's no threat. The dog's not gonna just fly off and bite somebody because they came close, all right? In Mondial ring training, it makes no sense, right, for real life, okay? Where they're teaching from like, I don't know the exact, three to six feet away from the object, that as soon as, 
the guy puts his foot inward towards the object from three to six feet away, the dog's allowed to run off and attack him in the leg. Okay? That is dangerous stuff for real life. You cannot do that stuff, right? That makes no sense. Okay? So, and you'll see here Michael with his dog, okay, that you see he sends her to something, she gets on it and she stays passive. Now we don't mind if the dog spins on it, right, a little bit to watch him. That's fine. Good. Good. Good, Rebel, good. For first time from the backpack, mix it up. We just don't want any aggressiveness out, hostility, barking, not necessary. Don't waste energy, okay? We just want a little bit of a lean in that it's gonna be, somebody's gonna hover to do it, okay? So you'll see her here, get on the object and he's gonna go around and bait her. You'll see him take a step in sometimes with his leg to set the pillow up. In Mondial Ring, that's an automatic bite, okay? But we do not want that, all right? So you'll see him go in with his legs sometimes, tease her like he was gonna do it, change his mind, go back around, put a foot in the setup. that would be an automatic bite again in Mondial Ring. <laughs> but from all the way out, not close, those dogs don't let you get that close. Here, you're gonna see Michael very close. Okay, so we're playing a very realistic game here. Him taunting her in a close range, going around, staying still, putting his leg in, and not until he makes a subtle move does she come up and hit. Okay, it's that. She knows that there was intention in that movement that he was actually that time going to go in and in for the object. Okay? And she's very quick about reading the body language, understanding when he's going to do it and when he's not going to do it. He's bluffing. Okay? The dog's brilliant. So that's what you're going to see Michael do here. to come in and she's spot on with it okay so it's beautiful technique 
her understanding is phenomenal. It does not get any better, it can't, okay? So this is how we would teach guard the object for real life. And here you're gonna see Michael at this puppy walk in, walk in with his feet, come to the dog, taunt, go back out, walk in at them, right? and teaching the dog different perspectives because in real life if anybody was walking straight on the object and didn't know it a mondial ring dog would blow off and just go bite the person okay so we're prepping dogs in real life for guard the object that if you see somebody walking at the object straight on doesn't mean you come off and bite you hold that position until there's a bend over, a reach in, not just because we're getting close or that we took a step in your direction. That means you can fly eight feet away and hit the leg. Okay, completely unrealistic and dangerous. Okay, so being passive, watching, Okay, even very close range, understanding, no attacks, no jumping off early, waiting for the reaching. Okay? And another thing, difference between sport, Mondial Ring in particular, and real life, people don't use their legs to get something, right? They bend over and they're gonna try to grab something. So KMPV does it properly for the police test where they go and reach down to try to grab it, the dog bites. It's exactly how we teach it, okay? The only difference between how I teach real life and KMPV, KMPV is half the version, close, but they only, the decoy stays on one side of the dog. They don't make them turn and guard the object if they have to. They just lay on it. They don't learn how to spin on it and guard it just in case somebody's going around them so the dog doesn't turn around and face the person to cut it off. They know that the person is gonna come in in testing and in practice just one way when they're down and come in that same direction. So there's no holding the object and teaching guard the object. Moving the feet on it and doing that, okay? So also a difference there, okay? Even between a more realistic approach than the Mondial ring. Mine, we're taking it completely to a totally realistic place for real life, okay? So it's get on it, move with it if you have to, no need to bark. You can just lay there too if you want, and just make sure you're looking and you can see the person and wait for that gesture, okay? That is a realistic guard the object. Okay, so the getting on and barking version is not realistic. It's a setup for me 
teaching all those dogs that to get a bark and hold. If I go to the realistic guard the object for a real life, it's get on it. I don't care if you stand on it, lay on it. I don't care. Stay passive. No barking, right? Not that they're not allowed to bark. They can here or there if they feel, but we don't want to send them there and rah, 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 like all the other dogs you see that I'm teaching there, okay? And generally get passive. All right? And that would be a real life, safely done, guard the object. Good girl.